All right, guys, this is uh, Tech Network, and I'm back here. I am doing more of the unified uh, biosphere of devices. This is the unified XG switch. This is a 10 gigabit switch. Comes with seven or 16 small form factor, guys. These are these ports right here. And then it comes with uh, four 10 gigabit copper ports. Really unique kind of setup for a 10 gigabit switch in that price range it's in. It is more expensive than some switches on the market, but it's also cheaper than some switches that are on the market. It is rack mountable, which is really neat. And it comes with that ubiquity unified, you know, biosphere of simplicity to set up. I'm going to get into this box and we are going to go over everything that it comes with. And then I will kind of show you the basics and setup of one of these guys. That'll be a next video, but I am gonna go over everything in here and kind of show you it. So one thing that I'm gonna show you right away, guys, is there is a hologram to show you that it is a legitimate um, ubiquity unified device that is not, you know, anything, any silly business going on. I don't know why, but I've been looking out for this stuff more and more because I've had stuff that was like, hey, that's a really good deal. Instead of paying $230 for a card, I spent 60. I get it in and all of a sudden it works a month down the road it starts just dying or having some real weird issues it disappears and then i reboot and it comes right back or it just freezes so i'd be really careful with getting stuff that is not actually from the manufacturer so i'm really happy unified U U ubiquity puts these holograms on their devices so this guy's kind of hard to get out I like their labeling. They do a really nice job of packaging. This is neat. I like this type of stuff on product. It just, it's that extra little touch, that little zing and zang to a product. Just so neat. So the first thing that you're gonna see are two wings. And these are the wings to actually mount the switch in a rack. They go like that on the outside of the switch. And then they mount your rack of bowls right through here. Put these off the side. We don't need these right now. Of course, we have a power cable. We have some screws for securing the rack mount wings. We have, oh, that was neat. Not all products come with this, but these are actual things that go into the rack square mounts that tie the switch into the rack. Most racks will come with this, but this is really neat. Now you don't have to rack mount this. You can tabletop this guy and you know, it'll work just fine. Oh, I forgot, comes with some a quick guide. Everything here does come with a quick guide. All right, guys, so these are our 16 SFP ports. There are dust collection guys to keep crap out of the actual port. And these are really nice. They're a rubberized Buna condom men, and they just protect dust and grass into the switch. I think it's really nice that Unify includes it with the switches because most brands don't. Now I do have a small form factor guy over here. So you have a couple different versions of these guys and I will go over the basics just because of this switch. So if you're gonna wanna get these guys, if you you can either get an SFP Plus, which is this guy, which is fiber, or you're gonna get a DAC cable, which looks like this. Of course, I went with 10G Tech. I, I love their stuff. This is a little bit too long. This is, would be a server cable, but the DAC cables have just like the small form factor uh, guy, it's all already on there. You can get a passive cable. This will go up to 16.5 feet and then anything past that is gonna be inactive. Usually they have between five and 10 meter cables. I've seen 20 meter cables that are active. You will pay more for those. At that point, you probably should look into getting an SFP plus with the fiber cable. It's just gonna be more economical at that point. For 10G and 1G. So you could turn these ports into 1G ports if you really needed extra ports. Um, so it, it really makes this guy kind of a jack of all trades. Then they got a pole switch to unlatch on the back right there. So what, for instance, you would plug this into your server, 
plug that guy in. This would go down, down your rack to your server. And then say, let's just say you got your Intel card, which is in your server, which is this guy. And this would plug in and then this would go in your server. Now, the reason a lot of these have dual ports is because they have failover. So if one port goes bad or is having issues, um, you can do load balancing too. So you get 20 gigs. So what you do is do one port down, one port up. They have all different types of LACP and, and load balancing and stuff like that. Different companies come out with unique versions of it and flavors, but the most common is gonna be round robin, load balancing, failover. So for instance, if I came here and plugged in another guy, that's what it would look like. And I'm just going through and plugging in some of these different devices to kind of show you what it looks like. So there's 12 small form factor ports. I'm sorry, I thought there was 16. It's 12 and then four 10 gig coppers. Now, if I flip the switch around here, which I'm gonna pull these uh, port guys out of here because these are sensitive. You gotta be careful. You don't wanna over bend these. This isn't like fiber. You can, can bend this around. You don't wanna treat, you wanna treat these guys with care because it is a, it is a it, reflection and stuff like that and a cable like this can cause some issues. So. You do want to take care of this guy and not overbend it. Uh, yes, it is copper, but you, you do want to take good care of this. Yes, they're about $20 for a passive cable, $20 to $30 for one of these passive cables. I'm giving you a, 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 a general range. It is not the exact amount. You can get active cables if you want to go farther than 16 to 20 meters. They do make active cables. So if you really wanted to, you don't have to mess with fiber. You could go get an active cable like this, plug it in, and then make a hole that's big enough to go through your wall and bring this guy into your server. You could get one of the plates that uh, have pass-throughs with the little fingers on them, that's like that, and just plug this guy through your wall. You got, you got a lot of options. If you need the faster speed for like your server, then you have it. Now, not everybody's gonna want a 10 gig switch like this. It is, it's really gonna be for the enthusiast grade, the guy that really has to have the fastest and best. So guys, that is the overview of the SFP pluses. So let me get you, bring you around the back of here really quick. Pull this SFP plus guy. They also make one that I do not have that has an ethernet end that comes out of them. It's becoming more enthusiast. 10 gig is becoming more enthusiast nowadays. It's not so much that enterprise grade. So they are making, they're making motherboards now with 10 gig NICs actually in the motherboards um, that are enthusiast and gamer grade, which is really neat. I think it's really neat. So I'm just gonna put these guys back in here and then uh, go over a quick overview of the different lights that are on here. So these lights will turn white all through here. They will turn green if it's 1G. So if you put a copper port in here and it's, uh, and it's connecting to a 1G NIC, this light will turn green. Same thing with over here. They do have regular SFP ports this will take regular SFP, which is, is 1.2 gigs. Sorry, no, well, yeah, 1.25 bi-directional, meaning you'll get, that is actually faster than a one gig copper line. Different devices will work in the ubiquity um, sphere of influence, which is really nice. I've tried Cisco, um, Microtech stuff, all works in the unified ubiquity devices. Now, of course, your mileage may vary. I would try to get the unified ubiquity DAC cables and SFP pluses if you're buying it brand new, just you know, just to make sure it works. Now, one thing I kind of skipped over are these guys. They have a bunch of different versions of these. You have to be really careful. If you are going to be doing stuff in a home, you need to be getting SRs that is short range. That means zero to 330 meters. The lasers get very, very hot, and if they don't have the length to spread that laser out, it's gonna beam the crap out of the other side and it will actually overheat the emitter in here and then it'll kill the small form factor device. It has gotten better over the years, but it is still an issue that you have to be aware of and you wanna be careful of. Coming around the side here, we got vent holes for cooling. There's actually active fans in the back right here for cooling, they suck right through here, both sides. There's a larger one on one side than there is on this side. That side's larger. You come around the back here 
and we have the power port. We have a 48 volt, um, 24 volt uh, VDC. And then we have a console port. All right, guys, this part right here is for a 48 volt or 24 volt redundant or singular power supply that will allow if this power supply takes a, a crap on you, this will take over. So it's like having dual power supplies. Now the power supply actually isn't in the device, it's sitting outside and it just provides this voltage for the switch and then everything runs dandy. So the max power for this guy is 56 watts, but it really doesn't need it. it it's just supporting small form factor in 10 gig. Um, so your 16 port unified ubiquity switch, this guy is absolutely awesome. That's what she looks like. And then of course we put your wings. It's four screws and it's pretty simple. Now you can mount the wings two different ways. I will go over that really quick. You can mount the wings so that the switch is, is flush with your cabinet or you can mount it reverse, which will either allow you to bring the cabinet up to right here. Um, sometimes if you have racks that are real close right here, you might want to protrude the switch out so it's easier to get to these different devices and it's not so close, especially if you have a lot of um, ethernet devices and stuff like that. Sometimes it's good to flip these around and, and actually protrude the switch out an inch or two. So you got two different ways you can mount these. I've seen it done both ways. Some people like that flat design and don't ever mess with it. But if you're like me where you're always futzing around with devices and you're, and you're goofing around with them, you're gonna want to have um, it protruded. So I've done it both ways with switches. I got my Microtech protruding, I got my Cisco um, flat. So I might keep all these guys flat. I might not, but that is the Ubiquiti XG Unified um, 16 port 10 gigabit per second switch. And this is Tech Knitwick, guys. And thank you for watching. Have a great day. Hey, guys, it's Tech Knitwood here. Make sure you guys subscribe and like and hit that bell. Thanks.